Welcome to my 2-6 video about the geometric proof. Today we're going to write two column proofs and we're also going to prove geometric theorems by using deductive reasoning. So first of all, some vocabulary terms. What is a theorem? A theorem is a statement that you can prove. And you usually do that with a two column proof. There are other ways of writing proofs. But a two-column proof is the most common way to organize the proof. The statements are written on the left, and the matching reason is written on the right. You, we will be writing a proof today. Here are some key concepts. First of all, the linear pair theorem. Linear pair theorem says that if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So here's my picture and I can say angle 1 and angle 2 are a pair. Therefore my conclusion is that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And this may seem rather obvious to you because we've done this before. If they form a line, then it's 180 degrees. But now we have an actual theorem to back that up called the linear pair theorem. Our next theorem is the congruent supplements theorem. And the congruent supplements theorem says that if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they are congruent to each other. So here's our example. We can say that our hypothesis is that angle one and angle two are supplementary. We also are uh, going to be given that angle three and angle two are supplementary. So if that's true, angle one and three are supplementary to the same angle two Therefore, our conclusion is angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Okay? Next page. The right angle congruence theorem says that all right angles are congruent. So, if I were telling you that angle A is right and angle B is a right angle, our conclusion would be angle A is congruent to angle B because they all equal 90 degrees, so that means that they have to be congruent to each other. Our congruent complements theorem is the same as the one that we just did before, the congruent supplements theorem, except this time we're talking about complementary angles and not supplementary angles. So this states that if two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent to each other. So if we're given that angle one and angle two are complementary, and we're also told that angle three and angle two are complementary, then what we know for a fact is that angle one has to be congruent to angle three because angle one and three are complementary to the same angle two, therefore one and three are congruent to each other. Now we're gonna get into writing a proof. So these are my steps. This is not in your book. This is my steps that I came up with to help students write proofs successfully. The first thing that you want to know is what do you want to prove? And I know that sounds kind of silly to think to ask that question, but a lot of students start writing their proofs without even looking at what they're trying to prove, without having a goal in mind. And if you just start writing down random things, then it won't help you get to your goal. So you have to have your goal in your mind before you continue forward. And what I say to do for that is that on your picture, on the picture, put a, put a box around 
the proof statement and draw it on your picture. And you want to use, when you do that, I want you to use a bright, okay, a really bright color. The next thing that you're going to be doing is what are you uh, given? So this is given. And so what you need to do uh, for this is you need to look at um, what you're given and put a box around the given statements and draw on the picture. Okay? So put a box around it and draw it on the picture. So I want you to do this in, an, in a different color. Okay, so you're going to need to have two colors when you, whenever you do proofs. You're going to need two colored pencils, two colored pens. It doesn't matter what you use, but you need two colors. And so this one do in a different color. Maybe you would use um, a bright teal like I have. Okay. Third step is what is obvious from the picture. So with your different color, you need to start drawing things. And what you want to look for is things like linear pairs or maybe vertical angles or maybe complementary angles, um, etc. So you need to look at your picture and see, is there something that's on the picture that can give you a clue as to how to write the proof? Now, finally, you want to think of a plan. Now, the nice thing about thinking about a plan in the beginning is that you don't have to worry too much about the plan right now because the plan for the beginning is all, always going to be given to you, okay? and you'll just have to like fill in the blanks and that sort of thing. When we get to doing things like proving triangles are congruent or proving that uh, a, a, a polygon is a parallelogram, then you'll have specific plans to think about to help you know what the, your plan is going to be. But for right now, the plan's gonna be given to you and you just need to learn the structure of writing a proof and, uh, and try and figure out the reasons for them as well, okay? So don't worry about this too much. In the future, these uh, will be finite in number, okay? Um, now, finally, you're going to start writing your proof. A lot of people want to skip to step five um, without doing anything else. They just try to go straight to writing the proof and that is always a recipe for failure when you're writing proofs. Don't start writing your proof until you do the first four steps. You will be much, much, much more successful. Trust me. Okay? So we're not going to do the bottom one here, but I want to do an example proof with you. So go ahead and take out a separate piece of paper and write down this proof and we're going to do it together. So pause right now and copy all this down. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started. The first step is remember, look at what you want to prove. So let's take a look at that. We are told that we want to prove that AX is congruent to YB. So I'm gonna to go to my, uh, my picture and I'm going to mark that on my picture. And notice I'm using the bright color uh, orange to put that on my picture. Now my next step, what am I given? So I'm gonna use this bright teal color to draw this on the picture. So I'm given that X is the midpoint of AY. So this is a midpoint of AY. And I'm also given that this is a midpoint of XB. 
So those are my two midpoints. So now let's think about, think about number three, what's obvious from the picture. Well, from the picture, I can see that x is congruent to ay. Therefore, ax has to be equal to xy. And if y is a midpoint of xb, then, X, then yb is also congruent to xy. So therefore, all these three should be equal to each other. And if that's the case, then I should be able to prove that these two are congruent because of the transitive property. Now we're going to finally go to step five, which is writing our proof. Okay, so here's how we write our proof. We're going to draw a two column proof and we're going to write statements here and we're going to write a reasons here and usually your first statement is going to be both is going to be all of your givens usually not always but usually that's the first good place to start so our first statement is going to be y midpoint of of a or sorry not y x midpoint of a y and y is midpoint of x b and my reason is that it is given to me. It's in part of the given statement. Anything that's part of the given statement is my reason. The second step now is to use what the statement is to help me uh, continue my proof. So you'll notice that uh, I already talked about it a little bit. I said that if it's the midpoint, then these two have to be equal. So that's, we're just gonna state that. So x a x, is congruent to xy, and I'm gonna go ahead and say the other one as well, yb is also congruent to xy. And my reason for that, usually when you're looking for a reason, you're either, so for reasons, you're either gonna have it be a given statement, or it's gonna be obvious from the picture, in which case my reasons would be things like vertical angles or linear pair theorem or supplementary or that sort of thing. Or it's going to be from the previous step. And in this case, my previous step, this magic word midpoint here, tells me my reason. So I'm going to look at this to help me know what my reason is going to be. My reason has to do with midpoint and it's just simply definition of midpoint. Okay, step three is if AX is congruent to XY and YB is also congruent to XY, then that means that these two should be equal to each other because they are equal to the same thing. So that means that I'm going to write it just like how it is on my proof statement, AX congruent to YB, and I'm going to say transitive property. You could also say that this is substitution because you're substituting in the XY or the YB into the XY. So that would work as well. Either of these two reasons would be acceptable for this proof. So there you have it. You just wrote your first geometric proof. And that's the end of today's lesson. Thanks for watching.